I will continue with this search now. Well, I'm known as Johnny Engineer Turmel. My symbol in politics for many years. Let's me stand out a little bit. But if you Google for great Canadian gambler, I come up. I'm the best Liverpool player in the world. I'm known as a college professor down in Atlantic City. And I'm going to talk about thinking outside the box. Now, every problem we're going to deal with tonight is underfunding, not enough chips. And I'm going to talk about the Argentine solution when they went broke 25 years ago. What the provinces did, they were forced to do. The union said, don't lay us off. Print up small denomination bonds, provincial bonds, and don't try and get cash flow. Just pay them to us directly. And that way we can pay in Ontario. Who would turn down an Ontario $10 bond that you could pay your hydro, your taxes, and your license fees with? Healthcare with. So, obviously, using these provincial bonds saved Argentina. Six provinces did it. Now, back in 2001, they were broke. In 2006, all foreign debt paid off. How do you do that? They have no money. Well, they printed their own, but they used good chips. Chips based on labor, provincial labor. So it's like a PayPal Ontario where you can buy in with either cash, Visa, or $100 of labor. And you can pay it back with either cash or with working it off the government $100 of labor. So this is all here now. I'm going to call it the Argentina solution when you simply print up enough bond currency to pay them. Because everybody in town who wants it, to pay these things will accept it like they did in Argentina. So when things get really bad, you heard an answer to the underfunding problem from Johnny Engineer Turmel. I had never got my engineering degree without a student loan. And six months out of school, the loan charge started. And I had to pay interest. So I didn't mind paying back what I got. But what did I get for the interest? Nothing. So I want students simply to have bigger student loans, as much as you need, and it's got to stay interest-free so that all your payments go against the principal. And it's the only way we're ever going to get out of debt. Because what keeps people in debt forever is the usury on the loan. But if you're interest-free, like PayPal, which it could be in Ontario, um, all of a sudden you can use what you need, as much as you want, but then we want it back. But you can work it off, right? So don't tell me that isn't a fair deal. I mean, as much student loans as you need, we just want you to pay the student loan back the principal. No interest. That's a fair deal. Because I've got enough chips to run the game right. They don't. They want me to have enough money. They're all nice people. And they're going to do their best to find you some money. But they don't know how money works. They don't know where to get chips from. I've been running chips all my career. You turn them up yourself and make sure there's good collateral backing them up in the cage. Well, time is the best collateral for the underground economy. Right now, when I went to Europe, 1999, 39 nights out of 40, I came with an IOU for a night back in Canada, worth five hours. In France, they pay 60 green francs an hour. In Germany, 20 green marks. In Canada, 12 green dollars. But between countries, we pay time. We can count in hours. And that's how I was able to travel and barter my accommodations back in Canada. Well, anyway, same idea. You'll be able to have a time bank where you can store your hours of labor and you can count on it later and spend it around the world already. So that is how the only way you're going to be able to solve your problem is to come up with a new funding mechanism, and that's provincial bonds. I found out it took two candidates to register a party, so I did. Now, I think outside the box, these guys sure don't take a printer. He can donate a job and give them tax credit. I'm going to go to Pizzeria and say, send 400 bucks worth of pizza down to the soup kitchen. Here's a tax credit for 300. That's legal, isn't it, boys? I can go down to a restaurant and say, send three, $400 worth of Chinese food down to the soup kitchen on Friday. Here's a tax credit for 300 bucks. I get to be Robin Hood and help the poor people with the government's money, and it's legal, right, Dave? So watch me go. My little poppers party's got tax credit privileges, and we're going to spread it around the province and finance every soup kitchen around, thinking outside the box. Well, getting me in Parliament would be like having a man with one eye in the land of the blind, and the provincial 
want ID would go with me. So the only question left is how the tax should be assessed for goods and services. A simple formula test for services. We levy tax at the end of every year. For assets, tax and pay depreciation. It's so clear. With cream, we pay for road repairs, and I would gladly take $3 for the working men so payment I can pay. And we could go to hospitals, and I would take as pay $3 to buy medicine and service they purvey. The government that spent the most and had the highest tax would be the government providing citizens the max. So I would love to spend the fortune, billions, and brand new chips. As long as people are giving me services to back it up that we can all enjoy, and then we got the chance to pay the tax for all the services we just enjoy. Well, when he says they need to find spaces, right, he really means they need to find a job, and he really means they need to find a paycheck. Because you can't have a paycheck, a job, without having a paycheck. And that's why when they say we're looking for jobs, and they don't admit that they're really looking for paychecks, what are the odds of success? Well, would making your debts interest-free be enough of a deal and giving you what you need until you're working it online be enough of a deal that you'd call fair? Would making your debts interest-free, would you call that fair enough? Well, think about it and use it and someday uh, you'll give me an answer. 25-year-old blue. Well, we can let municipalities use provincial bonds to pay people to. They're nothing but receipts for work, like poker chips. Give me municipal work, I'll give you some chips. Give me some provincial road work, I'll give you some chips. And it's all backed up by the work. So, same chips can fund all municipalities in Ontario. All we gotta do is write them some. So, if you can pay your hydro, your taxes, and your, uh, uh, fees and your health care with these Ontario $10 bonds, would you take them? Thanks. Yes, green energy jobs. Well, that is how time banking evolved. It was volunteer organizations who decided to start banking their hours, and then they could call on other people to come and help them back later. So if you did some research, you'd find out that the time dollar system in the United States is based on all volunteers. Well, when you have all these volunteers cleaning the rivers, that's nice to give them a hot dog and a coke at the end of the day. I'd rather give them some provincial bonds. What do you think is better? What do you think you get a bigger crowd of volunteers out there? A hot dog and a coke at the end of the day? Or a bunch of provincial bonds daddy can pay his taxes or his license fees with? So, we're back to the same solution. They've got not enough money. I've got always enough. Because I can create as many chips as you got the time as collateral for those chips. Just like a good casino banker should. Oh, I never even thought of it. I just can't believe that God cares which way our DNA shivers when we see someone else. You know, so um, as long as the funding is fair, and like everybody else, you have an interest free credit card. Honestly, I can't say I can do more than that. Once you are empowered financially, no one can push you around. And as long as you are, everybody can push you around. So people without money are victimized. People with money are the victimizers. And if you can get access to your credit from the big system in the sky so that you aren't that impoverished and weak, that's all I can do for you. All right, thank you, Mr. Trinnell. Well, first past the post stinks. I mean, they never hear about provincial bonds in a parliament uh, first past the post, but they would prevent proportional representation. I mean, first past the post, you hear what the grand candidates of the four major parties have to say about issues. And the four major parties have to say, the four major parties have to say, because they say who has the best chance of being first past the post, the little guys don't we'll ignore them. On Rogers, you had us all on one debate, next debate, just five parties. The guys didn't have a majority in Parliament. So they get all that free coverage, and the other guys get squeezed out. Well, I don't have to complain, I want my share of time. Last complaint went to the Supreme Court, this one will too. But something has changed. Now, in the old days, when they, I wanted to help an opponent, I had one minute to do it. Well, I'm going to take that video, I'm going to chop it up, and I'm going to heckle these boys, and I'm going to put it at my YouTube page. All you got to do 
Let's find drgirl.com slash poppers.htm and stay tuned for when I grab that second Rogers to make me heckle these boys for going without me. Yes, I love the idea of being able to email my vote, but no, I don't want Bush stealing the third election. And of course, that's the problem, security. Now, if Ron Paul was running against Obama, everybody thinks he'd Ron Paul would get more votes, but die old machines and say Obama, right? So, if there's no paper trail, you can't prove nothing. Programmers rule, except, except, if you give up secrecy. You announce in public, beside your webpage, I voted for Ron Paul, and he's got 60 million people who've done the same thing. I don't care what your die old machine says. So, yeah, if we have secret, no paper trail voting, we're gullible, we're losers. But if you give up our secrecy and admit who we voted for in public, then yeah, then they can't stop us. So yeah, I'm in favor of non-secret internet voting. Thank you, Mr. Chanel. Wow. Well, you know, if you go to the anthology of great Canadian characters, I'm in it. So, but no, if I have to pick the greatest Canadian, it would be uh, Bradford High School principal by the name of William Haberhart. Now, Tommy Douglas, because said he was the greatest, he was in favor of socializing everything except the banks. Let the loan sharks keep running everything, and we'll try and make do by socializing everything else. But Bill Haberhart took control of Alberta during the Great Depression, when people were really in bad times, like we'll be soon. And actually offered them an alternate currency. And when he tried to pass the legislation, struck down by the Supreme Court of Canada, said, You can't run your own provincial checks because the Fed's got the right to do it, even if they're doing it wrong. Well, he didn't know about provincial bonds, he could have done that. I got an end run. But Bible Bill Aberhart is the greatest Canadian to put up a fight against big money loan sharks in the history of our nation. And he came this close to success, and then suddenly he was dead. Thank you, Mr. Trevell. Mr. Sandman. And a Bradford High School principal, too. Well, I've got a two-minute video at YouTube if you look for Popper's Party Pitch, which basically explains how it would give you a PayPal Ontario account where you could count up the provincial bonds that you've earned working for the government. And it would also operate as a credit line based on your time. Now, what happens when you get this credit line? Well, if you've got a mortgage and stuff, you pay off your interest bearing debt. And after that, the payments to the time bank are interest-free. So you're substituting interest-free debt for interest-bearing debt. And as soon as we get that, that's what will happen. Now, I'm going to say something that fascinates most people, but how come the chips at this casino across the street, Brantford Casino, never inflate? They're always worth the same thing. And how come the government's chips Lose their value year after year. The hardware is identical. What's going on? Inflation must be a software problem, which is correctable by reprogramming the computer software behind the chips. So these chips are run interestfully and do not inflate. These chips are run with interest and do inflate. And that is the correlation of the big lie of economics, which tells you that raising interest rates fights inflation. Now, they're already saying inflation is 12% underlying, and they're going to want to raise interest rates more than that to fight inflation. So you walk up to your parents and say, 30 years ago, when interest rates hit 22%, what happened to the businesses in the country? Well, they're going to do it again. All over the planet, interest rates are being raised on the argument Interest fights inflation, and that's the big lie of economics. If you print chips for paychecks backed up by work, you can't have inflation. So anyway, the time standard of money, I am not to speak the UN, says time money is your best collateral. 